Good evening. It is 7.07 p.m. The open meeting, this open meeting of the Historic District Commission is being conducted remotely consisted, consistent with the Legislative Acts of 2021, Chapter 20, Section 20, an act relative to extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency. This meeting is convened by Zoom, is posted on the meeting agenda. Please see the meeting agenda on the town website for details on how to participate remotely. Are we gonna have public comment? No, it's not a hearing. Okay, this meeting will not feature public comment. For Zoom meetings, please note that the meeting may be recorded and it may be published or rebroadcast. All participation within this meeting will be visible to others. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be done by a roll call vote. So at this point, Bill, turn it back to you. Take a roll call vote on attendance. Okay, well, I'll open up the meeting at uh, 7.08 p.m. And um, we'll take a roll call for who is attending. John Morgan, are you attending? Yes, I am. Okay, John Stevens, we just heard you. Present. Yes. Brad Slapak. Yes, I am here. Present accounted for. Paul Scarlett. Scarlett here. Okay, so we've got five. That's, that's good. We have a quorum. Uh, we don't need to, we can dispense with a clerk support because this is not the regular monthly meeting. So why don't you uh, go ahead, Paul, and tell everybody what you've got. All right, so let me share my screen. Um, screen two. Let me know if you can see it. It should be a, um, a spreadsheet. I uh, can see email. Email. Oh, it's got my it's got my uh, screens backwards. Hold on. It says screen two, and it's really screen one. All right, I gotta open this thing back up again. <sighs> How do I make this screen big again so I can? see everything. It keeps getting smaller with each button I put. I can't help you because I certainly have a problem here myself. I don't get it. Maybe I can drag it and make it bigger. All right, forget it. I'm just going to switch screens. Hold on. So can you guys see this now? The spreadsheet? Yep. yep. All right. So this involves the work that has been, it's to account for the motor vehicle accidents one and two. Um, and it's the work that's not for the most part um, being done by jam or it's a it's actually really a mixture of it so um, you can see we have six deer island granite fence posts which are uh, being pre-drilled you can see that's almost a ten thousand dollar fee uh, that's covered by insurance the town i've been working with very closely with daryl roberts who works for paul Kenoyer, fantastic guy um, he's been working really hard um, to help us with this He's ordered all the stuff personally. He's been working with the town's vendor, which is Munitech. You can see that in the, in the uh, question feeds. They're the ones that'll actually do the installation of those, those posts and the railings. Uh, the town is going to paint the railings and they're gonna go around. I've confirmed they will go around and um, repaint um, railings all the way around and replace any that need to be uh, replaced um, separate from this. <clears throat> So I don't have the um, charge yet uh, for the railings themselves. Um, Daryl's gonna get me that, um, but I, I just don't have it yet. I don't have the fee um, that Munitech is charging to install the post and rails. I don't have the fee for them uh, seating around the, uh, the posts and, and um, planting of the tree and the seating around that. He'll get me all that information. Um, but um, if you look at the other expenses, we've got the existing uh, fence posts, then we have the two granite entryways, which have to be pre-drilled and cored. Um, there's a fee here, that $500 delivery charge, we will not be incurring because the town's going to personally pick it up. 
to save us that. Um, then we have uh, stuff that Jam's doing. We have the archway. Um, so you have $4,100 for the archway itself, $1,100 to install it. You got the hanging lantern, which is 1724. Um, there's a surcharge for the lantern because Jam is ordering it. So there's a 10% markup, which is common in the uh, construction industry when they're doing administrative things like that. Um, there's electric to uh, the new lantern. It was an added charge um, that I hadn't originally been thinking about, but they got to reconnect everything. That would make sense. Uh, there's $1,200 for the trash barrel. There's um, replacing the concrete pad that was destroyed. Um, there's some brick replacement. It's not the original brick we thought about, um, but when Bill was looking at where the bollards would go, we saw an area where they do need to be replaced. They were apparently able to get the stains out that we were initially concerned with, so I've left that item on. Um, there's a machine charge, which relates to the archway. Um, and then uh, there was a third motor vehicle accident, if you guys will recall, um, and that one isn't covered by insurance. So um, it's been challenging to connect with the town administrator. Um, so rather than, um, keep waiting to be able to connect with him to determine if he's got another uh, resource for us to, um, to deal with, with this. Decided that, um, and you know, it's obviously up to all of us to go for it, but I decided to, um, to throw it in as, as part of um, the project. Um, so you have the six, 1651.80 for the post itself. There's another 1850 to install it includes the installation of the, the railings and also um, loaming and seating. Um, that would all be done by, by JAM. Again, I don't have the cost of the railing yet. I will have that soon. The loam and seed around the new post, like, and no separate charge here is included up with that $1,850 amount. So why is one, short, I'm sorry, go why ahead. Is, why is one not covered by insurance? Because the person that hit this post took off, and we don't know who did it, so there's there's no recourse okay, for thanks. us to get insurance money. Um, the long and short of it is the MVA. If you add everything up between what the town is covering under insurance, the piece that um, wasn't covered under insurance. Um, plus the work that JM's doing, which uh, other than that, that one post is covered under insurance. The total cost for the motor vehicle accident is in the vicinity of $30,000. Motor vehicle accidents, I should say. All three of them. Say it again? All three of them, 30,000. Yeah, that, that's roughly. I, I haven't totaled out because I don't have all the figures yet, but that, that's roughly yep. what it is. And how much do we think the one that was the hit and run, how much do we think that will be? So that we have to pay the 1651.80 for the post. It's just one post? One post. And the $1,850 um, to install it, plus the cost of the railings. And I believe there's either two or three of them. I'm waiting for Daryl to confirm that. So it's, it's at least three grand, maybe more. Yeah. But certainly compared to the $30,000 that the overall damage um, is being assessed at. Um, that's a pretty small amount. So we have uh, change orders that we need to go before the select board to discuss. And uh, I can go into them in a little detail, but I wanted you to see where they are right now. So we have four bollards. They're at a price of 1540 each installed. So that's $6,160. We'll still need to um, provide them with um, guidance as to where they get installed, but for purposes of getting the change order done, that's not necessary. Um, there's some additional bracing that the, uh, apparently they have a new carpenter um, that's working for, for Jam. It wasn't present there last fall. They have become concerned because there's some additional listing of the bandstand from the winter, and they're concerned that it's, can't even talk, that it um, 
presents a safety hazard. So they want to do a, um, a bracing of the roof to support it during the construction. And we can go over it, there's a diagram in there. Um, but this is like a, a non-starter because they're not gonna do the work unless it's safe. Um, then they also brought up um, the foundation again, which if you recall, we all discussed it last fall. Um, it was a, if memory serves me correctly, a $4,800 item at that time. Uh, it was a little bit different approach than what they're um, suggesting now. Um, but their, their point is, you know, we can look at it and say, all right, this building's been, been there since 30, 1935 and it hasn't blown away. Um, maybe it won't blow away again for another uh, how many ever years that is. Um, but we're putting in some significant dollars to uh, redo this, this structure. And $3,200, which is $1,600 less than what they were asking for before to do it the right way, as Andy said, um, seems to me short money. So I wanted to discuss having us do that. I did forward you the detailed um, information that I got on the paint splatter. Did everyone get a chance to review that? That was a, a note that Daryl had sent on the I steps went that. through. Say that again, Bill. I didn't see that. I sent it when I um, forwarded um, that note. Hold on. I, can, I think it's in this email. Uh, this one? Yeah. So this, this email, you guys, I can make it bigger. Does that make it easier to see or harder? Was this <laughs> the email from Thursday? Yes, this was from Daryl Roberts, who is in the Department of Public Works. And he's, I had asked him because I had reached out to Jam because I know when, Bill, you met with Paul Canoyer and I think Daryl was there too, you guys yeah. talked about sandblasting. And I knew that JM had tried a variety of methods to try and get the paint off with no, no real um, positive result. Um, I asked them to reiterate what it was they had done. And there was like chemical things and um, a number of different things. It was three or four different ideas. None of them were sandblasting. And they said, um, you know, they're not the experts in that. So, you know, if we wanted more information that we should reach out to somebody who has some expertise in that. So that's um, where this email comes in because I had reached out to Daryl to ask him if he could help with, with getting that. I figured maybe he could reach out to the granite company that we get the granite from. And he took it a step further and actually um, went through, he goes into great detail of the process they tried and how much work it was to um, only somewhat um, successful results. Um, and he felt that there was still the chance that it might discolor the, um, the granite, which would lead to having to do all four sides so that they, <laughs> I mean, you can read through what he put there, but it, it oh, yeah. to me does not seem like this is something we could, we could pursue. Um, I think we'd be better off just getting uh, some paint that is roughly similar to the the color of the the granite and yeah and touch it up that way. And, and, and I suggested that as a possibility to Daryl too. But um, yeah, but I think we can follow that up with the Department of Public Works. But um, it, I, how much this would cost, uh, I think, would be <laughs> um, yeah. you know too much compared to. You know, what it is. Right. And, and, and Daryl explained that now what they do, because this was done a long time ago, is they put some, some cardboard up there when they paint it so they don't splash. Yeah. Through. They created a template. It's not cardboard. It's like a, a plastic oh, material. Okay. Um, but yeah, they use a template so that they avoid this from happening again, which is good because I had asked them about that too. Yeah. I think, not, I think not, this not. happened, you know, a long time ago. So they had some. Yeah. High school kids or something doing it. Yeah. For free or something. So. Um, all right. So, um, so the paint splatter, that's why I have it um, lined out here. 
Uh, we have, again, that new granite post from motor vehicle accident number three. That's the price of it. Uh, the railings, I, I don't have the exact price for, um, but the post rails installation we know is $1,850. So the total right now is 19,108. It's not gonna go over 20 railings. You know, four by four, it's essentially a four by four by, I don't know, are they 10, 10 foot lengths of the fence, 12? I'm not sure. I know wood's expensive, but I don't think yeah, yeah no, two I, railings are going to cost us right. you know, and 900 bucks. Daryl will paint them and yeah, probably be. Yeah, the town already said they, they would paint them. Right. So, so the, big, the big issue is really uh, the bollards, the bandstand roof support bracing, and then the insulation of eight helical piers. It's a helical yeah, and basically, if you, um, in fact, I can call them up. But the concrete tubes in the ground? It basically is, have you ever used an auger? Yeah. So an auger is like a corkscrew, essentially. Right. That's essentially what they are. They're like corkscrews that they put down and in, into the ground. And it's a easier way for them to do it than those sonnet tubes. Yeah. Um, How deep do they go, like three feet? Um, if I can find the... Let's see if it was in Andy's. Yes, this is it. So um, these are the prices for the the archway that I already went through the um, the new lantern. Uh, the surcharge for the new lantern was incorrect, and I, I had that fixed. So this amount actually is um, is less. It's thirteen thousand nine hundred and twenty six dollars and eighty two cents. So that that will what will be reflected in the change order. They had originally told us the ten percent, and then he had forgotten it and threw out four hundred. And I called him on it, so they pulled it back. Um, the other expenses we already went through, but um, he gave some detail here. So this is showing how the um, the coring need to be needed to be done for the entryway post as well as the groove for the for the um, electrical conduit. And I did bring up um, and it's included now as a, uh, a item from left over from the original phase, putting in the um, adhesive that will be um, like a gray color to to kind of blend with the, the granite post, but to cover and protect the, the conduit. So he's agreed to do that as part of that. Then um, this was, I was just talking about the other ones. These are the bollards. That's a picture of the bollard. So I know it looks black, but it's actually a evergreen color. It's a very dark green. Mm -hmm. At least it looks black to me. I don't know, I'm colorblind. <laughs> Uh, and then um, this is the support bracing that I was talking about. Um, roof components associated posts are now leaning and less structural than originally scoped in order to replace the posts and blow framing safely without risk of collapse. Bracing and structural support will be necessary to make concerns that the posts holding the roof are not built in as part of the floor framing, but in fact, they are toenailed into the decking. In order to replace framing, decking, and post simultaneously, the entire roof shall be braced using 11 LVLs and tubular jack posts on four by four by three support pads and angular bracing posts to keep from racking. And Remind a, me what an LVL is? I think that's a beam that they run across. Lemonade. Don't ask me what LVL stands for, but um, I believe it's like a composite kind of beam. Like, I think that they, yeah. they run across. So this is how they're going to do it. So that it'll essentially be jacked up at these locations and supported while it's being constructed. Um, and then this is the helical piers. And we're showing where they go. Um, I think there's a drawing. That, this is what they look like. Sorry, it's sideways. Okay. You can see it's essentially like a corkscrew. Yeah. Huh. So could we do without those? Probably. Um, 
but you know if we're putting in the kind of money we're putting in why not do it right and make sure that it's like three and a half feet. issue is, is Jurassic. it's thirty two hundred dollars we have the money. We've got essentially about one hundred and thirty thousand left in our um, in our funds. Mm -hmm. um, so um, we can certainly cover it. And Andy sent me these. He's working on the um, change orders. Just so you guys know, um, I've asked for this to be on the agenda for next Tuesday's um, board of selectmen's meeting. We need to get the change orders to them by Thursday for them to um, have them to review ahead of that meeting. Are they going to, um, do we know if they're going to let us appear before them? Well, I'm, I'm still hopeful. And um, I think as long as they do um, allow us to meet with them on the 19th, as, as we've asked, and I, I think I'll go, but, um, you know, maybe we should post for it in case we all want to go. I mean, can kind of play well, it. I'll certainly go. Yeah. And, and Andy's going to go, right? Andy will be there, but uh, you just want to make sure that we don't have a quorum there. Um, so if more than just you and I want to go, then we should post for a meeting so that we can talk. And not well, if there's, there's, seven meeting, of us, there's seven of us on the committee, so wouldn't a quorum be four? Four, as long as we don't have more than... Um, three people there so we can have you and me and someone else yeah yeah have up I to would, three I, I would like to have three of us yeah no that'd be great or i mean i'm just saying if more wanted to come we just, just yeah that's it we could um just post it can you override me to to make it so i don't share anymore because i i can't figure out how to get get it back there's no option for it, and I can't make the screen bigger. Share. Sure. Review the full Scarlet screen, view options. There's literally no option. Wait a minute, what's this? Hold on. Pin, hide selfie. Choose, choose video filter. How about just like give me the whole view? It's not even an option. No, yeah, I, I keep looking for. Uh, I don't get it. It always seems like it's something when we do this. Choose, I'll try choose virtual background, see if that brings it up. Nope. I can just bring it up. Choose video filter, pin, hide non-video participants, hide self-view, maybe hide self-view. No, I couldn't do it here. No, and there's no, no option for me to do it. Sorry, guys. Well, let me ask, are, is anyone else available to go to this meeting if we have it on the 19th? Sounds like it's you and me, Paul. I, right. I cannot. So he, no. he's still in Texas. Yeah, yeah you're in fine. Texas. I, it's not necessary. I just I didn't want to exclude anyone if they wanted to go. Um, all right. Um, I, well, while I'm still sharing, maybe I'll call that document back up. So basically, what we have to do, guys, is. Um, vote to um, or not to move forward with these change orders. Um, we have the amounts. The only amount we don't have is for the, um, the railing cost. So again, we know it will be under $20,000. Um, you know, certainly go through them one by one if you, if you prefer to um, vote on each one or if you wanted to take them in their entirety, you could, you could do that too. Um, I, I will reiterate, though, the um, roof support bracing is a, a non-starter for the for the contractor for, for safety. So they, won't, they won't do it without that. No, they need that. I'll, I move to accept Paul's proposal uh, in total rather than going through one by one. 
Okay, you want to second that? I, I second that. Okay, thanks, Brad. All those in favor say aye. I should have discussion first, Bill. Or well, I should say, yeah, I'm sorry. And it's got to be a roll call. Right, it just occurred to me. Right. Um, no discussion. John Morgan, any discussion? Uh, no. Nope. Brad? Nope. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. I mean, uh, in the interest of getting this project done, I think we should just approve these, this and move on. To do a roll call vote. Um, okay, Brad, how do you vote? I vote to uh, accept and move forward. Okay, thank you. John Morgan? Aye. John Stevens? Aye. I also uh, aye and approve. And Paul? Scarlet aye. So okay. assuming we get this um, through the select board on the 19th, Jam has said they can start within a few days of that. Um, we've been getting some, <laughs> you're, you're gonna, all right, let me, so we know we, the farmer's market has been asking, and I, I've had um, conversations with multiple people from the farmer's market, and I know John Morgan and I both emailed Jake, who is, I believe, in, I don't know what his title is, but he's, he's running the farmer's market this year. Um, they're planning on starting sometime towards the latter part of June, and we may very well be wrapped up with this in a time frame that would support them, but we just can't guarantee it. Um, right. What we've been trying to um, advise the, the town is that um, we're aiming for having everything wrapped up to the best of our ability for July 3rd, so we can have the July 3rd concert. Um, so the sooner we get started, um, obviously the, the sooner it gets done, we're anticipating six to eight weeks. Um, you know, going to July 3rd gives us a little buffer we just don't know with supply chain things whether we're going to run into issues. We've ordered a lot of the stuff ahead of time. Um, that, you know, the one thing I, I don't think is going to be here, um, well, it still could be here within the time frame of, of the project, but um, it could yeah. potentially take a little bit longer is that lantern. Um, but, you know, if the lantern, that one lantern isn't up, that you know, can still utilize the common. Do you think the arch will be yeah, them. I have no reason to think that the arch wouldn't be up. That that could be manufactured as long as they have the material to make it. Um, yeah. We should be we should be good. And they they've known this for a few weeks, so um, I'm not anticipating a problem unless okay. you know something unsuspecting happens with regard to supply chain issues. Excellent. So, um, but uh, the interesting part is I had some dialogue um, late last week with. Cindy eyed. I didn't understand at first that um, <laughs> apparently there's somebody that they had said could use the common for a wedding this spring. And it's in May. It's like the middle of May. It's when they're planning on it. Um, so I had encouraged her to, you know, look for an alternative because I, I wouldn't think that these folks would want to have their wedding ceremony in a construction site, um, which is essentially what it would have to be with all the seating that will be done. Right. Um, we're gonna have to cordon off areas with yellow caution tape. And, you know, obviously the bandstand wouldn't be able to be used. Um, that area by where the backflow preventer is gonna go um, you know, could very well be dug up and, and blocked off. Um, so I encourage her to you know, see if there was a possibility of having them change their venue to the Mill Villages Park, which is a very nice site as well. Mm -hmm. uh, right. I don't know how that has turned out. I did ask if that wasn't um, feasible and they were still planning on moving forward with this to let us know so that we could take the precautions with the, you know, obviously we'd have to let the contractor know. We'd have to put up that caution tape and, and whatnot. So. Mm -hmm. You know, some part of the common might be like that towards the the country store, maybe that third of it. Yeah. I, uh, well, that's where the backflow preventer is, though. No, that's true. Yeah. 
So, and then the other quadrant towards the other side is the side that really needs receding. And then, um, you know, they're going to be receding around um, any of the fence posts that go in. So there, there, there will be probably the other side, the side towards the congregational uh, church. I can see um, that, that the sprinklers coming on during the ceremony. And... <laughs> that be... Oh, boys. That's, that's something to, uh, to think about, though, right? You know, who knows what schedule that stuff's on? Oh, be a real disaster. So, but that's just something we're, we're going to have to uh, deal with potential. Okay. Well, I, it, we, uh, we, we carried that, um, that motion, so that's approved. Yes. And I'll work with Andy to finish these change orders, and um, we'll get those off to the select board. And then we'll keep our fingers crossed that they um, put us on their agenda for the 19th. Yeah. I made it clear that um, you know, we can't move forward without being able to get these approved. So hopefully. Um, I'm sure they are, are feeling that you know there's pressure to get this done. Um, the townspeople want it done quickly yeah, so we can lose clearly. the common. So. Clearly. And, and well, the, the great thing is we have the money. Yep. Yeah. yeah. You know, even with this this whole extra piece of the project that we're able to do, we're still in all likelihood going to be able to return a, a big chunk of change to right. CPC to be used on other projects. So the only okay. thing that we have left, and we should probably fold it into this before we close it out, um, is that um, camouflage slash cover that we've been talking about for the backflow preventer. Andy had mentioned you know one idea would be to just um position a bench over it um one thing is we would have to put a slab down around it for that to make it accessible and it, it was kind wouldn't of wouldn't be high enough would it, would it have it would to be some sort of a custom bench he thinks it it might be high enough that it's not that really? tall but yeah you know, we'll have to see there um he did send in those change orders, there's some information on the backflow preventer. I haven't had a chance to review it yet. Um, I'll send it to you guys once we finalize it. Um, but I believe they have finally provided the level of detail that Jam has been looking for to be able to move forward. That's good. It's, it's only taken, what, nine months? Yeah. <laughs> However long it's been. Um, as far as the bollards are concerned, Bill, um, how did you guys want to move forward with trying to figure out where those go? Were you going to try and coordinate some more with? So I uh, spent about half an hour before the meeting uh, drawing up a little <laughs> plan, but I can't show you because I, I, I can't get a screen there. Yeah. Um, so it's essentially, Paul Kanoya thought four would be good. Um, two will be in front of protecting the granite posts and then one will be right in front of uh, the electrical panel. Then you have the phone pole, which is also partially obscuring the electrical panel. And then one would be to the other, in the next, uh, in, towards the, um, towards Worcester from the phone pole. So there'd be four spread out along there at equal distances. So they're evenly spaced? Yes. Okay. And they're all in that grass area between the curb and the side. Yeah, and they're, and they're obviously on the outside of the fence. Right. But they're not in the road, so we don't have to worry about... No. No. Um, traffic committee. No. He said, I asked if we needed to go to the traffic safety committee. He said no. Yeah. If they were in the road, that would be a different matter. Yeah. All right. That sounds good. Well, I'm excited to kick things off and get this project wrapped up. It's going to and be I nice. think when, when, when it comes time to put them in, I'll make sure that you and I are there with, with Paul and, and whoever else from the committee would like to be there. So we know. Yeah, I, I can exactly. run up there. And exactly where they go. Yeah, and Andy's going to be, you know, he's not going to be on site every day, but he said, you know, at least two, if not three times a week, he'll be on site. Um, I can pop up there. Um, certainly throw you into the mix too. <laughs> John, if yeah. you want to, John Porkin, if you want to 
be part of that, but I know you may not be as readily available. I'm not sure. Are you going to the office with your new job, John, or are you working remote? Uh, I work remotely. Okay. You're loving it, huh? I love working remote. I've worked remote for most of my career. Really? Yeah. Oh, now so, I'm getting to enjoy it, too. I like what's it. your new job, John? I'm sorry? What's your new job? Uh, I'm a uh, global account manager for Honeywell. Okay. You went to the competition. Yeah. That's what happens. <laughs> well, good luck. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, guys, we need to discuss anything else? I think so. That was the main thing. Like I said, once we get these um, change orders finalized, I'll make sure that I send them out to you guys. Okay. Thank you. Well, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Okay. Brad, um, uh, John, are you in favor? John Morgan? Yep. I'll... Yes. Okay. Brad, you're in favor? Yes. Paul? Yes. John Stevens? Aye. And myself also, I'm in favor. So I declare the motion carried. Thank you guys for getting together so we can uh, yeah. wrap this up. Thank you very much. It.